If you're like me, medical training made me think that sleep was a waste of time and I could sleep when I was dead. I didn't understand why we spent 30% of our lives sleeping until I read this incredible book, Why We Sleep, by Dr. Matthew Walker, a neuroscientist at UC Berkeley. If you don't want to read this whole book, you can take a picture of this QR code and read my semi-extensive notes on the book. One of Dr. Walker's main points is that wakefulness is actually a toxic state with buildup of inflammation throughout the day, and we need sleep to clear out that inflammation. Our glial cells, which are the glue cells between our neurons, actually shrink 200% at night, allowing CSF to flood into the brain and remove those toxins, such as beta amyloid, one of the plaques that builds up in Alzheimer's disease. So what makes us sleep? Decreased natural light, such as the sun setting, triggers the suprachiasmatic nucleus to stimulate the pineal gland to release the hormone melatonin, which spreads throughout the brain. Melatonin corrals the neurons of the brain to get into synchronous waves and begin non-REM sleep. There are four levels of non-REM sleep with deepening synchrony of these waves, and this is where much of the cleanup happens. Finally, we enter into the magical realm of REM sleep, where dreams are played out on a highly visual canvas, memories are integrated, leaps in logic are made, and creativity abounds. We go through four to six 90-minute cycles of non-REM and REM sleep. This is why adults need seven to nine hours of sleep. There are some short sleepers, like Barack Obama and Narendra Modi, who only need six hours of sleep, although I would argue that they probably need a few more. And there's long sleepers like Roger Federer and LeBron James, who sleep 10 to 12 hours a night. It doesn't matter if you're a short sleeper or a long sleeper, the important part is you understand how much you need. The way you can figure this out is by waking up without an alarm clock for about a week and you'll see how much sleep you actually need. I found out that I need about 9 to 10 hours of sleep, so I guess you could say I'm like the female Indian version of LeBron James. Very few people can get by with less than 6 hours of sleep, however 30% of the US population reports getting less than 6 hours a night. This kind of chronic sleep deprivation can lead to a whole host of health problems. A four times increased risk of stroke, 45% increased risk of heart disease, obesity, decreased fertility, immune system imbalance with increased risk of infection and cancers. In fact, the World Health Organization recently described night shift work as a carcinogen. Total sleep deprivation can actually kill you. It's used as a form of torture, and it's one of the few things banned by the Guinness Book of World Records. They'll let a guy jump out of a capsule at the edge of the atmosphere, but they won't let you deprive yourself of sleep. So what can we do to improve our health? Well, I'm gonna give you five tips to improve your sleep hygiene. Number one, having a consistent bedtime and waking time, both weekdays and weekends. Trying to binge sleep on the weekend to catch up does not work. Number two, you wanna regulate your light exposure. It's optimal to get early morning light as well as late afternoon and evening light to promote your wakefulness. This is a great time to exercise, which can also help your sleep. You don't want to exercise right before bed. This will increase your core body temperature and disrupt your sleep. Most importantly, you want to start decreasing your exposure to blue light, and you can do this by shutting down your devices one to two hours before you go to sleep, or to having settings such as this one on the visibility setting where you block out the blue light that's coming from your device. Number three, understand the effects of caffeine and alcohol on your sleep. Caffeine is a powerful stimulant, however, it has a half-life of six hours and a quarter life of 12 hours. So having any caffeine after 1 p.m. is still gonna be in your system when you're trying to fall asleep. Alcohol is a sedative, and sedation is not true sleep. In fact, alcohol really disrupts your REM sleep, and you might not even notice it, except a feeling of lack of energy the next day. Number four, prepare your bedroom for sleep success. You wanna make sure that the temperature is 65 to 67 degrees. This mimics the setting sun and lowers your core body temperature. If you're cold, use extra blankets or even a weighted blanket. Make sure that there's no extra noise. You can even use a white noise device like this one. And if you have blackout shades, that's great. Or you can just use this kind of eye cover. Number five. This is the most important and most challenging one, which is decreasing your overall anxiety, particularly before you go to bed. You can do this by shutting down your devices and doing relaxing things, like taking a bath, reading a book, making a manageable to-do list for the next day, and meditating and focusing on your breath, which stimulates your parasympathetic nervous system and is essential for sleep. 
That's it, folks. I hope you're as excited as me about the incredible power of sleep. It really is so important for clearing toxins, integrating memories, and promoting creativity. And with that, I wish you a wonderful sleep.